God, He is our fortress and our refuge, a very present help in time of need. Amen. Hallelujah. He is our rock. He is. That song said, He is our rock. A rock is something immovable. God is immovable. He is unchangeable. What He said in His word, He will perform it. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's unchangeable. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. All the time. All the time. It's good to sing songs of praise that build you up. Yeah and uh, right. remind you of who God is mm. in our lives. And so it's, it's just a wonderful thing just to sing about God, yeah. you know, just singing about Him and reminding ourselves of what He's done for us, who we are in Christ. Mm. And that really lifts us up out of bondage. Yeah, it does. You know, when you, when you sing songs of praise that lift you up, then you'll begin to see, wow, there is power in the words that we speak. Yeah. You can put them in song and it becomes life mm. to you. And the Bible is full of words that we yeah. can sing songs of right. praise and glory to Him. Mm. And I like that word magnify. In the book of Psalms, it mentions the word magnify the Lord a lot. It talks about that. And what it simply means, it, it doesn't just mean make God bigger. But see, when you take a magnifying glass and you point it at something, the thing doesn't become bigger. But mm. your vision of it, your focus of mm. it magnifies. You begin to see it more clearly. That's right. And so when God, when the Bible says magnify the Lord, He's saying make God big in your life. Mm. Make Him prominent That's and right. bigger than your problems. And your problems will just be so small mm. when you magnify the big God who is inside yeah. you. Yeah, and that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about mm. protection and begin to realize that God has His angels all around you to keep you safe from right. all harm and danger. Mm. And um, that is a promise that God has given to yeah. us. You know, a promise of protection. He's given us promises of peace. Peace that you can have in the time of a storm or 
times of trouble and uh, maybe you're going through a troubling situation and uh, maybe you feel like you're unsure about your life, God's word gives us the security that we can have in this life. Mm. We can have an assurance in Him. And so believe that today, even as we you know, share with you the word of God, that, that the word of the Lord will speak to you to this day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been talking about the peace of God and um, we spoke about how fear comes from the enemy and yeah. fear is the opposite also of peace. Yeah. Worry and care is also the opposite of peace, but there is fear that is also the opposite. And fear is not from God. Second Timothy 1 7, we started with that. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a mm, spirit. It's a spirit. And a spirit is, is something controlling and it's something that drives. Now, mm. the spirit of God is not a controlling force in the sense he guides us and leads us. Mm. The spirit of fear puts people into bondage <laughs> yeah. and in trouble and alarm. Mm. And, but the, the peace of God will help you overcome yeah. any fearful situation. That's, you know, that's amazing about the peace of God is that even when you're in the midst of a storm, God's peace will keep you, you know, completely at rest and calm and undisturbed. That's the kind of peace that Jesus is talking about. Yeah. Is even in a storm, that peace can keep you calm. So what is the storm that you're facing today? Maybe it's a storm of uh, sickness and some kind of a financial thing or probably you have a, maybe you can't sleep at nights and things like that, different kinds mm -hmm. of storms out there. And whatever it is you're facing today, you can believe that God wants to set you free, yeah. right? God wants to deliver you from that. He's given us many promises in the Bible that He delivers us out of trouble. Mm -hmm. He brings us out of situations yeah. and uh, He enables us to overcome them. And so actually the life of a Christian is supposed to be an overcoming life, you know, overcoming every challenge that you face. Instead of looking at the challenges as um, things that are going to put you down, mm. you will overcome them when you right. have the ability of God yeah. working in you. And we also looked at that scripture in Colossians 3.15, yeah. how we need to let the peace of God rule mm. our heart. And you were also talking about letting something and let not yeah. into our heart. Letting. Maybe you can share on that. Also. Yeah, that's really good. In fact, we can um, go to the scripture in John 14, 27, along the lines of what we've been saying. Now, as Shalom said, let and let not. Earlier, we said that our hearts are like a container, right? A few episodes ago, we said that our hearts are like a container. And what we fill it in is exactly what is going to come out of our lives. Right? So mm -hmm. if you're storing fear on the inside of you all the time, then you're going to, all the day, you're going to speak fear, you're going to live in fear, because that's exactly the way we've been designed, is mm -hmm. the, what, what's put in our heart is, is going to come out of our mouth. Yeah. And then we saw how we can be delivered from fear. Mm -hmm. We saw in um, the scripture in 2 Timothy 1 7 that says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So we realize that even if even if you fill your heart with fear, you can begin to change that and fill it with peace by speaking the promises yeah. of God. And um, another thing we also saw was using your authority against fear. You know, see that fear is an enemy, and that you don't have to live with it, bound by it all your life. Mm. You can you can take the promises of God and speak to that fear and say, fear, you have no control over me. I'm a child of God. Right. And uh, that's going to set you free. Mm. Now over here in John 14, 27, it's an interesting verse that we see here. It says, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Mm. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Neither let it be afraid. Now, you remember back in Colossians 3.15, we saw how it says, let the peace of God rule your heart. Yeah. Right? God wants you to let His peace. In other words, if He's saying to let, that means we right. have to do it. Yeah. We have to, we are, the, um, we are the masters of our heart, right? God's not going to just put His peace on you only. You have to mm -hmm. begin to go after that peace. His peace is on the inside. It us. is on the inside. We just need to use it. That's you know, right. Operate in the it. peace of God. We need to operate in the peace. Yeah. We need to let that peace be used in our lives, yeah. right? By the words that we speak. Yeah. So Jesus says here, let not your heart be troubled, yeah. right? So there are two things. Early he said, let his peace rule your heart. And here he says, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. So like we saw when trouble comes, what should you do? Immediately start saying the promise. 
God is a very present help in time of trouble. Yeah. Right? And as you begin to say that, you're refusing to let your heart be troubled. Right? How do you let your heart be troubled? By speaking the trouble. By yeah. saying, it's going to weigh me down, it's going to put me down, and I don't know what I'm going to do. That's how you let your heart get troubled, by the words mm. you speak. Or maybe even hearing others talk troubling situations. Mm, and not coming against it. Yeah. You have to see trouble as, as an enemy and mm. refuse to be bound by it. Right? Yeah. Refuse to let it control you. Mm. And Jesus says here, I'm giving you my peace, right? The peace that he gives to you can keep you calm even in the midst of any kind of trouble that's all around you. Yeah. That's his peace. It mm. is so wonderful. It is. Yeah. And over here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests be made known unto God mm. and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus that's powerful the mm. first verse says and and this is a command you notice it's not an option if you want to mm. you should do it yeah. it's a command be careful for nothing yeah now what Jesus is not saying is you know or what he's trying to say is you know cares will come but choosing to not be careful is the key, right? Because when you choose to not be careful through the words that you speak and filling your mind with the, the problem and the care and the worry, by choosing to not fill it, fill your mind with all that, you, verse 7 is able to, you know, continue, and the peace of God. Yeah. So what you do with this care is be careful for nothing. You may feel, you know, like maybe, maybe something is troubling you. Yeah. And so you feel very careful about it right? You can choose, I'm not going to think about this to the extent where it makes me, you know, worry about it so much because there are some cares and worries that can cause people to get sick too. Mm. It can bring yeah. sickness and disease. And you don't and want that. You don't want that. So you mental, recognize it as an enemy. Yeah, mental illness and all that. That's the reason Jesus says, be careful for nothing because mm. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. When you keep worrying and meditating on the wrong things, on the problem all the time, mm. it's very bad for your mind. It's not good. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And I love this. I was listening to this talk by someone and they said, you know, be careful for nothing, but replace it like this. When you, when you face a troubled situation, the first thing you do is pray about it. Mm. You know, pray to God and say, Lord, this situation, you didn't cause the trouble in this situation. You didn't cause, you know, bad to happen because God is a good God. He doesn't mm. cause bad things to happen in our lives. So you pray about it. You say, Lord, I thank you for giving me the answer mm. to my problem. That's right. And by prayer and supplication, and it says with thanksgiving. Come before the Lord with mm. thanksgiving. You can be in a trouble and immediately lift your hands and say, Father, I thank you that you have delivered me. I yeah. thank you that I have come out of this victorious. Yeah. If you start to respond to troubles and cares like that, it's going to just, those, those cares and worries, they're not going to be a big mountain in front of you, mm. right? As you do that, wow, God's peace will just begin to flood your mind and keep your mind safe from mm. all evil. Because when you face a care, you have the, like we saw, let and let not. You have the right and the authority either to let it settle in your mind and cause you to be in bondage, or you have the right to let the peace of God rule your heart. Yeah. You have the choice. Yeah. But God's not going to make it for you, but you have the right. Mm. So like even as you're reading this verse, I was thinking, like we've taken a couple of verses, make this a prayer over yourself. Make it your statement and, your, and you can say it like this. Lord, verse 6, you can say, I will be careful for nothing. Mm. I'm not going to be careful for anything in my life. And then, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I will let my requests mm. be known unto you. Right? That's what you ought to say. Father, when you have the care in front of you, you say, Lord, this is the care that's, that's uh, tried to come and trouble my mind. And then, immediately you can say, in Jesus' name, I'm not going to be careful mm. about this. I'm going to just commit it over to you and thank you that you have set me free. Mm. From and this. notice it also says the word requests here. Yeah. Because sometimes we want to speak out whatever we're going mm. through. But the Lord is saying you can speak out what you want, but speak it out with thanksgiving. Yeah. What is the solution that you want 
for you for the problem that you're facing mm. instead of talking to God about the problem you can say Lord I thank you for the answer to mm. the problem maybe it's a family situation come before the Lord and say Lord I thank you for the answer to this situation maybe it's a financial problem say Lord I believe you are my God who provides yeah. all my needs according to your riches That's in right. glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for the answer. Thank you for the solution. Mm. And thanksgiving, you can come before the Lord with pre previous and past blessings that the Lord has blessed you yeah. with and past victories. That's one of the best ways to come before the Lord in prayer. Yeah, that's why it's good to sing songs that um, lift up the name of Jesus and songs that remind you of who you are in Christ. Mm. Right? Those, when you sing songs like that in a time of a, of a troubling situation, those songs are going to really minister to your spirit. They're yeah. going to lift you up. Your mind is going to be at peace because mm. we're either singing a song of death or a song of life. Right? Mm. The song of death could be, I'm not worth it all. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do in life. It's just too difficult. Mm. I mean, that's a song as well, even if it's not with a tune. Yeah. Right? But in that time, those songs are not going to lift you up. When you're faced with a trouble, immediately, if you've, you, you can start to um, you know, sing a song of praise, like say, Lord, I thank you that you're my helper in this situation. God, you are my refuge and my strength. That's right. A very present help in time of need. Mm. And even for me, I know like a lot of times, you know, I, I just start singing these songs of praise. I start singing, God, you are my refuge and you are my strength and you are my, um, you are my rock and my fortress. I thank you that mm. you know in Christ I am more than a conqueror. Right. I start say, singing those songs and those songs just lift me up. Right. They really build my faith up mm. because you're singing life and life filled words are going to lift you up out of that mess. Mm. That's what you want. You don't want to be in that continuously all your life. You can lift yourself out of trouble just by beginning to lift up the name of Jesus and lift up his word, what yeah. he has said in his word. That's very important. And I'm also reminded of this man named David yeah. in the Old Testament, how when the children of Israel, the armies of the living God were mm. faced with this situation with the giant Goliath and he was coming against God's army and saying, you're nothing, you cannot do this, mm. who are you? And then David, this young boy, he walks into the battlefield just coming to see his brothers and he overhears what this giant is saying. And then he tells the brothers and the other people in the army, he says, I can take this giant over. Mm. I'm going to fight this Goliath. Yeah. And he comes, people, they bring him before Saul and he comes and Saul says, what do you think? You, you, you think you can do this? You think you can fight Goliath? And David, he answers something nice. He says, the Lord has delivered me from the mouth of the bear and mm. from the lion and the Lord will deliver me from this giant. And he also says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine or a man who has no covenant mm. with God? Who is he against the armies of the living God? Yeah, see, David had filled his heart so much with the victory greatness of God. Of God. Yeah. He filled his heart so much with victory, right? He had all this time, even before he faced the giant, he had been putting uh, uh, songs of praise in his mouth mm. and promises of who his God was. Mm. And when he faced a situation of trouble, all those what he had put in his heart came out of his mouth. Yeah. There is the other, the people, you know, the armies of um, Israel, they were afraid because they were looking on the outside stature of this giant. But David looked to his God in the midst of that trouble. Yeah. You know, where you focus on in time of trouble is very important. Mm. Your eyes are either on Jesus and the Word or either it's on that, that problem that you're facing. Now, mm. it doesn't mean you need to you know, forget about the problem and say, I don't have any problems, I don't have any problems. That's not what it's saying. It's saying when you're faced with a problem, you bring that problem to the Lord, but you, you but talk about the victory that you have in that situation. Yeah. That's really important, yeah. talking about the victory. And we were also discussing about fear, yeah. how fear has no... Um, to, uh, fear has no right over you. Mm. And um, we can even see the scripture in Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. The latter part says that through death, Jesus destroyed the devil who had the power of death. And verse 15, and he delivered us who mm. through the fear of death were all a lifetime subject to yeah. bondage. 
Now, this scripture is talking about we have been delivered from the fear of death. That's good. We don't have to be afraid when we die if we have Je received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You don't have to be afraid of death. We have been delivered. Jesus Christ went to hell when he was crucified on the cross and he died and they buried him in the grave. His spirit was alive, but his spirit went to hell to, uh, to defeat Satan in the grave. Yeah. And he defeated Satan mm. and conquered and he rose up again victoriously. That's right. And because of that, we have a living hope and we are redeemed. We are delivered from the fear of death. That's amazing. So if you're fearing death today, you don't know what to do when, uh, when you die and you, you leave this earth. What you can do is say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me and that you rose again on the third day. And I believe that you died to save me from my sins. And I don't have to be afraid of death anymore. No, fear of death doesn't have to control you anymore. Mm. Because Jesus, when you receive Jesus in your heart, he gives you an assurance of your destiny. Right. Once you receive him into your heart, you can be assured that you're going to heaven to live with him mm. forever. And that fear of death is gone when you have that assurance. Right. And my destiny is assured. And that is such a powerful truth to know that. Mm. And, and yeah. And another one quickly, another fear that God has delivered us from in Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. It says, the latter part of 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. This is Jesus saying this to you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Amen. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. God has delivered you from the fear of man. That's right. You don't have to look at man and be afraid of what they're gonna say and what they're gonna accuse you with because Jesus is on your side. Yeah. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's today right. you can declare, I'm not gonna be afraid of man mm. because Jesus is with me. Yeah, that's So right. I'm delivered from the fear of death and from the fear of man. From the fear of man, that's Ooh, good. good promises. Yeah, that's good. And you know, even as we close the program today, the verse that uh, Shalom just read, where it says, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. You can put mm -hmm. your name in there one more time, like we said, like personalize these scriptures over your life. Yeah. And you can say, Lord, I will boldly say that, Lord, you are my helper. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Amen. And so today um, we're going to pray over you and we're going to command that spirit of fear to leave. If you're facing fear today, and you can believe today that God's word is a working word and it can set you free from every bondage. So maybe if you're facing some kind of fear and torment or any kind of thing, you can repeat this prayer after me. And it's, it's more of like an authoritative confession and we're going to pray together. Let's pray. Let's say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross to me. set me free, to set me free from all kinds of fear, from all kinds of fear, all kinds of death, all kinds of death, and um, any kind of situation that is troubling, any kind of situation that is troubling. You have set me free. You have set me free so that I can have peace of mind. So that I can have peace of mind. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of fear. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You get out of my life. You get out of my life. God has not given me a spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit but of, of fear. power. But of power. Love. Love. And a sound mind. And a sound mind. I believe I'm set free today. I believe I'm set free today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So believe that God has set you free. Mm. And you can write back and tell us how these episodes have blessed you. And enjoy the victorious life that God has for you. Amen.